What's up, Pyromaniacs? Proud Stasis here. We are back in the world of Elder Scrolls Online, and I'm on my archer today, but that's kind of irrelevant because what we're going to be talking about is crafting. Crafting in Elder Scrolls Online is pretty damn cool. There are quite a few different crafting abilities. There's alchemy, blacksmithing, clothing, enchanting, provisioning, and woodworking. Uh, I will be releasing guides on these in the future, showing you guys what some of these abilities do. Uh, I'm giving you a complete breakdown of each specific one. But today we're just going to be talking about um, harvesting, which is the first thing you're going to have to do really before you can get started. Now, when you get out here in the world, it's, it, it just basically tells you kind of loosely you need to look for, you know, things near rocks and things near trees and bushes. And it doesn't really tell you what it looks like. So I'm going to do my best to show you. Now, this right here, this is iron ore. Uh, you can see I'm just outside of um, pretty much the second tier area in Betnik. And uh, this is this is iron ore. It's right up here against some mountains. That's usually where they come. You just get right up next to them, press E, and you will mine it. Now, for those of you guys who don't have um, the ability yet, you're going to be wondering, well, why is it glowing? Well, yours won't be glowing. So don't don't look like, see that right over there? That's an iron ore. From here, you know, it doesn't glow. As I get within 20 feet of it, it will glow because of the ability that I've got. Uh, to get the ability, unfortunately, does cost a skill point. So kind of early on, it, it kind of sucks when you have to spend this uh, the skill point on the crafting. But keening eye ore, or keen eye ore, that's going to show you where it's at, and this can be upgraded to make it even further and further out. Uh, pretty much every single skill has some version of this, whether it's uh, the relics or such or not. Uh, one of the other things is jute. As you can see right here, I do not have access to jute. You can see it kind of blends in with some of these yellow trees, but they're, they're the little yellow bushes that you kind of see around. Um, they're just pretty much out in the fields like, like normal. Uh, one of the other big sources of cloth and such that you can get is by shooting wolves. So if you see wolves in the area, you know, take a moment, pop a cap in them, and, and you'll, you'll get some nice stuff. Also, just because one type, like, you know, they mentioned the yellow, doesn't mean it's like, like that blue one back there. Don't just look for yellow. You know, keep your eyes open for stuff that looks a little weird, and you guys can find it. Now, I'm trying to find one of the logs. Now, the logs are a little tricky because they, obviously, they're around other trees, and they look like little fallen, uh, dilapidated... I don't know, rotting logs. I guess that's the easiest way to say it. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can find you guys one here in just a second. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is while you're roaming around here, a lot of stuff spawns in the same direction or same areas. So like right here, these are the runes. The runes spawn really close to uh, ore spots. So if you're running around the mountain, you're gonna find lots of ore and you're gonna find lots of runes. Uh, that's, that's a good place to get those. Ah, here we go. This right here is what maple looks like. You can see the little strand of tree here. You just look around for these and pick them up as well. Now, at least initially, you're probably only gonna get somewhere between two and three for these. Uh, as your skill progresses, that apparently increases. You can also get other sub skills. Um, I don't know why I keep hitting C. Like for blacksmithing, if you get the minion hireling, you can send somebody out to get them for you. And then right here, you get more of a, or a better chance of extraction. Um, you can just get quite a few different abilities that will make mining these nodes a little bit easier. Now, one of the things you are going to want to take in mind is while you're out here, everything only processes in groups of 10. So if you've only got three, six, or nine, it's not going to do you much good. You're going to have to basically wait till you hit 12 before you can get it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pop this wolf so I can show you guys that they usually, of course, this one will probably not drop it, but I'm hoping it will. Come on. And night, night, and night. Here we go. You can see you can get rawhide from there. There's one other component that for this, I can't for the life of me recall right now uh, that also drops from those guys. So just, you know, find yourself a nice little area. Uh, for me personally, uh, in this zone here, uh, right here is really good for ore. Pretty much all the way around the uh, the outskirts is good for wood, uh, jute, and such like that. You know, as long as there's trees and bushes and things along those lines, you can find flowers and herbs, and you do pretty good 
you know, just kind of roaming around there. Uh, the sad thing is, at the end of the day, you're just going to need a ridiculous amount of this stuff. So, you know, keep roaming around, keep getting what you need, and you'll, you know, you'll eventually be able to get some progress. Now, when you get back to crafting, which I'll be showing you here in a minute, there's several tiers. Uh, I wanted to get a couple more pieces before we go back, but I guess we'll just go ahead and head back now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and teleport here. This is back to the town. Very nice little teleportation process, and I love that it's not on a cooldown. Kind of blows that you have to spend the money, but money for the most part is pretty easy to get. Now, when you get to town, what you're going to look for is you're going to look for these little stan stanchions here. Uh, so this one right over here is going to have a blacksmithing station and a clothing station. If you hold your cursor over here, you can see alchemy, cooking, enchanting, and woodworking. So we're going to go over here to the blacksmith, which uh, is over here to the right. Uh, sometimes you'll get lucky and all of the areas will be right next to each other. Sometimes they're all spread out and you kind of got to run back and forth. Uh, but uh, the smith, which I believe I still got a pretty decent amount of ingots, is right over here. Now, if you've ever played Skyrim, you'll be semi-familiar with this process. Uh, there's a few tweaks, though. Now, pulling this up, you're going to see the little, you know, popped out view like you normally would. Uh, you can see we have 13 iron. So the, the stages here, just to go over them, are refining, creation, deconstruction, improvement, and research. Uh, deconstruction is something that was brought in, I believe, it was either in Hearthstone or in on Skyrim or uh, Dragonborn. I forget which. So first stage is refining. We've got the ore, we're gonna drop it in there, press R to refine it, it refines, and you can see I've still got three ore, but I can't do anything with it. Thankfully, you do get equal number of ingots. You know, it's not 10 ore to get one, or three ore to get one ingot. You get 10 ingots for it, which is nice. So it's, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Now you've got the creation. When you pull up to creation, you know, you can see all of the things that you could make if you have the gear and all the things that you can make if you have the items for. So if you have knowledge, there will be some things in here that you may not be able to afford. Have items that will only show up the things that you can actually make with the gear that you've got. Now the first tier is right here. This is, this is the ingots. This is how many ingots you want to put into it. This one right here is the, I guess, racial equivalent you can usually buy these from a npc that's nearby no talk to him and you can see we've got the bone fragment that we need right here right there each of the different races have their own requirement uh, like i said for me it is whoops for me it is the bones once you decide you want to make something uh and i think we're gonna go with well yeah i guess we'll stick with uh with one of these uh we're gonna go with Let's, let's make some daggers. Now, with the dagger, you can see it's going to take two iron to make. You can see in the upper left-hand corner, I've got my skill here. Now, it's going to take one bone. The trait gem, I believe these are kind of like enchantments. They give you a little extra twist on the crafting process. Uh, if you increase the ingots here, you can actually increase the dagger as well. So even though this is a iron dagger, it is a slightly better iron dagger because we're putting a little bit more ingots towards it. So we're gonna go ahead and craft that real quick. I can see it spits it out. You can see we get a little bit of improvement up here with our setup and that allows us to actually see it right here in the deconstruct. So at this point, this dagger is now worth 13 gold. I can go sell it to the merchant if I want. Um, you're gonna lose money uh, because the bones are worth 15. So we put one bone in this thing, three ingots, and we're still not making enough for the bone. So you're, you're better off deconstructing your stuff. So let's go ahead and make a few of these real fast. And then we'll, we'll look at, two, at, at some of the other options. So let's go ahead and make, uh, let's make two more. Well, three more. Craft. And each time you do, you get a little bonus. Now I wanna show you one thing real quick before we deconstruct these. If you come over here to improvement, you can see that our daggers are 18, six and 13. That's pretty decent. You can see that we can go from fine to fine, superior, epic, and then legendary. Well, let's go ahead and drag one of these down here and you can see that we have a honing stone. Now, this is one of the big differences from Skyrim. You have to break other things down to get these stones or find them in loot, et cetera, et cetera. The other thing is, it's not just breaking whites down. To get some of these, you've got to break down, uh, at least for the, the uh, green ones, you've got to break a green down. And then I'm assuming for the other ones, you've got to break a blue, and then purple, and then legendary. 
it's rough. I mean, it gets really, really expensive. Not only that, but right here you can see there is a 20% chance. Now, if you increase this 40, 60, 80, or with five, you have a 100% chance. But that means you have to disenchant five green daggers for the chance to make one green dagger. Now, obviously, since the game has just started and I haven't done a whole lot of gathering, we've only got one shot. The real catch on this here, and this is this is the really freaky part. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click improve. And you can see up here, you have a 20% chance to improve Iron Dagger by applying one of the Honing Stone. If this attempt fails, the Iron Dagger will be destroyed in the process. I'm also pretty sure you lose your damn Honing Stone. That sucks. So you're better off waiting until you've either got a decent amount of these or you've got something you don't mind losing. It just kind of depends on how much you want to gamble. Just for the sake of making this video, I'm going to go ahead and try this one. Uh, I'm not going to be using daggers all that much, at least at least initially. So if I lose some of this stuff, it's not really going to kill me. So let's go ahead and give it a shot and let's see what happens. We've got four daggers in here. They're 23, or no, 23 is the improved version. So let's go ahead and click E for accept. And that's a failure. So sad face. We lost our honing stone. We lost our dagger. That's a sad face. And you can also see from here, going from 18 to 23, I mean, that's that's some nice damage increases, but it's not ridiculous. It's a five point damage increase. That's about, that's a little less than a 30% improvement. So, I mean, I guess that's pretty good. I guess that's pretty good. One other thing I wanna show you guys real quick is the research. These right here are the different traits that you can get for your gear. And each of these gives a specific bonus. You know, you can do uh, better enchantments, you can have more critical strike, etc., etc. To get these, you actually have to research something. So right now, I'm already researching something. I believe, I think we're, at, yeah, we're researching right now a weapon that I got. So one of these is going is in the process of being researched right now. It takes six hours for these. If we flip over here, you can see we've got one hour available right here for this one. You click it, and then you, uh, I think you have to press R. Yeah, all blacksmith, yeah, all blacksmithing slots are in use. So right now I've only got one. So we gotta wait till this one finishes, and then we can do this. So that means to unlock all of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six times eight, that's 48 hours. That's assuming, of course, you actually have the item that you wanna disenchant. And as you can see, I believe each of these slots has its own setup. So that's like what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven different pieces of equipment. Each of them have their own slots. And if they're completely unique, that's 48 times eight. I'm a Texan, I can't do the math. That gets a little ridiculous. So uh, you can tell that this is gonna take a little while. So. Keep in mind, you're probably best off simply deconstructing your stuff like you would with Skyrim. Deconstruct it down to its base components, let it sit, and then go through and rebuild. Um, and, and remember, you wanna kick these up as, as high as you can. That way that you get a little bit more experience. If you don't, your EXP is gonna be pretty low and you may be grinding you know, for freaking ever. So anyways, hopefully this helps you guys out a little bit. Um, I'll be doing, a, like I said, a little bit more in-depth guide where I go over some of the more uh, in-depth setups, maybe give you guys a guide on how to craft. Uh, take a look at these little abilities you've got here. You may wanna throw at least one point into the keen, uh, the keen eye of the appropriate skill that you're gonna do or the appropriate skills. For me, it's gonna be woodworking and blacksmithing. So both of those are gonna be worth throwing a skill point in for. So keep that in mind while you're roaming around, while you're doing your other stuff, try and pop some of these things out because it'll make your life a little bit easier. Anyways, if you found this video helpful, make sure you slap that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next clip.